on today's episode of how to flip and refurbish furniture. Uh, welcome back to The Broken Masterpiece, you guys. Today I get to show you the biggest profit I made off two furniture pieces. I found these pieces on Facebook Marketplace for $150. If you're looking at them and wondering what that horrible black thing is, yeah, you guessed it, two by fours. Who puts two by fours on the bottom of a super nice piece of furniture? Beats me, and they painted it black, it was awful. These screws were so deep in, I couldn't even get some of them out because they were stripped. So I took a jigsaw to the base and in between the screws, I cut a few pieces up. And I was very careful not to cut into the base of the dresser. These pieces were not only drilled into the bottom, but they were also glued to the bottom. So for the long dresser especially, they were really, really attached. Once I was able to cut it up both sides, I knew that I could kung fu fight this piece, and so, yep, I kicked it down. Yep, and it came off perfectly. For the rest of it, I was able to wedge them out, use my hammer, and then I was able to get the rest of the screws off. Now this whole thing did jack up the base just a little bit, and so I used wood filler anywhere that it needed to be repaired. All right, I'm gonna go through some steps and I'm gonna have you guys write these down because if you're gonna do any high gloss painting at all, especially with Fine Paints of Europe, I'm gonna show you my process. Now, I am no professional high gloss painter. If you want a professional, go check out Painted by Kayla Payne. She is a professional. I am learning, but I'm here to show you my process because this piece I did pretty darn good on. Now, after you've cleaned your piece, you've taken off all the hardware, You've used a degreaser and you start getting to the sanding part. So I'm using my new surf prep sander. I'm gonna link it down below, but you can use any sander. You're going to scuff sand the entire piece. These tack cloths are amazing. They get off all the dust. And then I love these DeVille Bliss wipeouts. They come with acetone on them, or you can use acetone and a microfiber rag. And you wipe the piece down and detacks it and it just gets the surface ready. Fine Paints of Europe comes with their own primer. It's oil-based and it needs to be thinned with 10% mineral spirits, just like the paint. For high gloss painting, you're gonna want a really good sprayer. I have the DeVille Bliss finish line, but you can use any HVLP that has a really high pressure gauge. The air compressor that I use with this gun is not big enough, but it's big enough to do what I need it to do. It's 26 gallons, it's a really quiet one, and I just have to wait for it to fill back up when it needs to get repressurized. I would say getting the flow right and getting the paint atomized enough is the hardest part when you're working with paint like this. Your primer is gonna need to dry for 24 hours before you scuff sand it with a 220 grit or higher. All this unevenness needs to go, even if you go right down to the wood again. Um, like Painted by Kayla Payne says, you almost want to sand it off completely and have it stick in any of the grooves or imperfections and all of your imperfections need to be mostly filled at this point. Now normally I would have filled where the hardware is indenting on the piece right there, but because I'm using the same hardware, I didn't need to. After you scuff sand that first layer, you're gonna go back through, you're gonna repeat step four. So you wipe it down, then you wipe it down again with the acetone wipe, and then you make sure your area is completely dust free and clean, and then you start painting again. Hopefully you guys are getting the gist of this now. You're gonna repeat these steps again. So you're gonna let it dry for another 24 hours. You're gonna go through with a higher grit this time. So that means lighter grit. You're going up in number and you're gonna go through and you're gonna scuff sand the whole piece. You're gonna put on a third coat of primer. You're gonna make sure it looks really smooth. And honestly, the primer should look so good that it looks almost like the final paint coat. All high gloss is about is sanding. That is something I also learned from Kayla Payne, is that it's all about the sanding. I'm using a very high grid at this point, making sure that there's no dimples, making sure that I'm wiping it clean, wiping it again with the acetone wipes before I'm applying that first coat of paint. Now, when I was doing this first coat of paint, look at my garage. It was the same garage that I had done all the primer where I had worked for the last while. And look at that finish. It just doesn't look mirror glass smooth. And I had a lot of imperfections in the top that settled because my space was not clean enough. So this led to a Give a Mouse a Cookie garage makeover. I completely made over my garage. I have another video that you can go check that out. I rehung all my sheeting. I made sure that it was completely dust free. I had a filter on my fan and I got to work sanding it again, last time. 
Now, I did not sand this in my spray booth. I'm sanding outside my spray booth at this point because I'm trying to keep that spray booth completely dust free. And I'm getting rid of all of these dimples or as many as I could. These pieces had sat for a few weeks and so that's also why I scuff sanded it pretty well. I mixed up my paint, it had been sitting for a while so it was all completely separated. So mix it up really good, use your tack cloth, use your acetone wipe, wipe everything down. I put so much water on the floor, I sprayed my walls with water before I moved the furniture in and got to work on the prepping of the paint, which is mixing it up, thinning it with mineral spirits, loading my gun, making sure that everything is set and the walls are clamped shut. I can only show you part of this final process because my phone was getting covered in this dust. Um, but as you can see, I'm wearing a full paint suit. I'm wearing a full respirator because this stuff is no joke. Um, also, my water cooler is covered completely because this stuff is highly flammable. flammable. For this process too, I've learned that nice light coats is the way to go to not do it too heavy or you get the orange peel look. All right, one of the coolest things about this piece is after I got off those ugly two by fours, it already had spots to screw in legs. So here are the two pieces before, and here is my staging setup. So I use this 10 by 10 brick backdrop. It's on Amazon, so I'm gonna link it below. And this faux flooring, it's actually a wall paneling. You can find it in the baseboard section. And then just a little piece of baseboard that I get, it's about eight feet across, and I just keep it in my um, garage. When I'm staging furniture, I make sure to take the photos from straight on and then get a bunch of close-up shots, showing the details, showing the drawers, and I make sure to stage it with colors that are complementary and gonna make the piece look like it's in a home. The original poles on this piece are painted in Rust-Oleum's metallic gold. It's one of my favorite golds. And all of these staging items are from At Home and Marshalls. Since these are my own pieces and not a client's, I get to sell these. And so I went on my vidiq.com, which is a subscription that I have for my YouTube. And I went through and asked it to write me, it has an AI, write me a description for a high gloss dresser set. And it did. And guess what? I copied and pasted that, added a little bit more, posted it to this women's group that I'm in in Charlotte for home goods. And guess what? I sold it for $19.95, you guys. I bought it for $150. Using AI for ideas, for marketing, for description, it's huge, you guys, so make sure you capitalize on that. I'm so proud of these pieces. This is my nicest high gloss to date. I can't wait to do this again and try it in different colors and try this process. It does take a long time. Each layer has to dry for 24 hours and you can't rush this process. So if you're working with any other pieces in the garage, stop, wait till those pieces are done, and then work on your high gloss pieces and give them patience. Next week, I'm going to show you guys how to stain and resurface old vintage furniture and how to work with wood stains when it's not actually wood. So we'll see you next time.